Good evening, Mr. Bond fans, and welcome once again, where if you were anything like me and you were one of those people who were thinking, the No Time to Die production has been going really smoothly lately, it's all plain sailing up until the release date from here, you were very much incorrect. I mean, I know that we're probably not going to get such a thing, but I would just absolutely love a complete warts and all, fire on the wall documentary about the making of this film. It's had such a fascinating production. So as you're probably aware, this story concerns the music composer for the film. It was announced months ago that Dan Roma, who had worked with director Kerry Fukunaga on other projects in the past, was announced as the composer. And then a couple of months ago, news broke on the James Bond radio Twitter, or at least that's where I first saw it, that's where I first saw this particular bit of news. The story broke that Dan Roma was off the production, and that was kind of it. Like, this was a quite a big bombshell, and then the story, other news outlets picked up on it, but they were always sort of quoting back to the James Bond radio announcement, and then things just kind of went quiet for a bit. And of course there were little rumblings here and there, like obviously David Arnold's name cropped up every once in a while, but he himself confirmed on Twitter that they hadn't asked him back for the film yet. And then out of nowhere, the news drops that Hans Zimmer is going to be composing the score for No Time to Die. I, I don't know how you go from someone who's quite green when it comes to composing for such big productions as Dan Roma to Hans Zimmer, who is like up there with the likes of, you know, John Williams and, dare I say, even John Barry, in terms of, like, real high-profile names within that particular area of the industry. I don't know how you go from one to the other. So as of me recording this video, the news hasn't actually come from any official James Bond source. Eon Productions haven't put out a statement or anything like that, but Variety.com broke the news quite confidently that, yes, Hans Zimmer was going to be replacing Dan Roma, composing the score for No Time to Die. And of course, it's hard not to feel some sympathy for Dan Roma for being made redundant from this post. It would certainly have been his most high-profile gig on his CV if he'd have gone on to compose the final score. And I have no details of why he was let go. It was one of those, you know, creative differences excuses. As if this film could have any more creative differences. But you know what? I'm happy that the producers if they didn't feel like the score was right for the film, I'm glad they would replace, even at this later stage, lest we end up with something akin to... Yeah, I don't want any more of that. Hans Zimmer's involvement in the film kind of makes sense when you think that Eon Productions have already been dealing with him, or rather his company, Remote Control Productions, on the music score for a, a, a film that they're releasing preceding No Time to Die called The Rhythm Section. A guy called Steve Mazzaro is listed as the composer for that film, but... Hans Zimmer has this company which is kind of a, a host to a variety of composers and often when Hans Zimmer is credited as doing the score for a movie, a lot of the time the company is credited as providing additional music or Zimmer will work with one of the composers from this company to create the final score. So when you hire Hans Zimmer, I don't think it's unfair to say that rather than just hiring a man, you are very much hiring a company and a brand. And this was part of the reason why I was a little bit, uh, conflicted, actually, when I was first exposed to this news. I think I'd made- I definitely made peace a while ago that David Arnold was not going to be returning for the film, even though that would be mine and I'm sure a lot of your dream case scenarios that he gets drafted in to do another Bond score. But I understand schedules being what they are and the relationships being what they are, it might not necessarily work out. I was actually quite excited about Dan Roma doing the score because he's someone who I'm really not familiar with. It would have been something completely unexpected. I would have no idea. I would have no uh, expectations going into the film what he would bring to it. Whereas now with Hans Zimmer, I wouldn't be surprised if we have the Bond theme played at half speed with a bunch of Whoa. And I know that I'm definitely playing into some of the more basic stereotypes of Hans Zimmer's work by making that joke, but it, Hans Zimmer's music is something that I love when I'm watching the film and I think that it accompanies the film really well. I think that Dunkirk would be half the film it is if it weren't for his amazing adrenaline pumping score. At the same time, it's not a score that I have on my iTunes to listen to readily. And that's not to say, obviously, that film scores necessarily should be things that you can listen to while you do housework or on your commute or whatever. And I saw Dark Phoenix, the X-Men film, uh, not too long ago, and that had a Hans Zimmer score, and to be honest, his score was 
probably the best thing about the film. And I think his score for Dark Phoenix might be a good kind of barometer of what to expect for No Time to Die, because I like that in Dark Phoenix, he took some of the pre-established themes of that series that had been composed by, I think his name is John Ottman, in some previous installments, and he took those themes and incorporated them into his own work, and I'm hoping that we get that with some Bond themes and some familiar motifs. And I'm sure we'll get that. Him and his team are smart people, they know what the audience wants, and yeah, I mean, obviously Hans Zimmer's name is the one that's being going through it, because obviously he's a very high-profile figure, and I'm sure he will probably end up having the final music credit in the opening title sequence for the film, but it would surprise me greatly if it wasn't some kind of a collaborative team effort, especially at such a short notice. And maybe that is the best way to do it at this short notice, like divvy up the work, give a composer like, you know, half an hour to, to score, give someone the action sequences, give someone the love sequences, and jobs are good. I just am hesitant to embrace this kind of over corporatization of movie soundtracks and it's great that Hans Zimmer has had such an influence on the industry and yet I feel like we've seen a lot of themes specifically move out of movies and we have them replaced with a lot of Whoa. and maybe that's all this film needs and it's Craig's last film, it needs that kind of epic quality, and Hans Zimmer certainly delivers that. I think if I had to give a favourite score of his, uh, it would have to be The Lion King. His music in that film, I know that Elton John and Tim Rice get an awful lot of credit for the music for that film, obviously they did the songs and the lyrics, and it's amazing work from them as well, but the musical score itself, like, particularly when... Um, I hope I'm not spoiling anything by saying this, but Mufasa dies, and that whole sequence, the whole stampede sequence in The Lion King is just phenomenal work. Proper adrenaline, emotional, and I really hope we get that side of Hans Zimmer scoring this film, and not the Hans Zimmer of, let's say, Batman v Superman, which was a incredibly bland and lifeless score, I felt. But it was attached to a bland and lifeless movie, so I guess I can't dog on Hans Zimmer too much for that. So I guess, in summary, I'm kind of reluctantly excited about Hans Zimmer's involvement in this film. I mean, he's such a high-profile name, he's a pair of safe hands at the very least, so uh, if, uh, even if at the very least the score for No Time to Die is passable, that's still an improvement on Spectre. Uh, this video has probably sounded a little bit more negative than I actually am on the whole thing, uh, and I've seen a lot of people out there super positive, people who are far more knowledgeable about movie soundtracks than I am, people who are real geeks for that kind of stuff have been so enthusiastic and excited about this, and if you're one of those people, please do let me know in the comment section below. I would always like to hear more opinions on such things, and uh, do you think we're in for any more surprises when it comes to the production of No Time to Die? I'm kind of really hoping that this is the last big change, but who knows? You know, we've got three months to go. What's three months when it comes to releasing a high-budget, high-profile movie like a James Bond feature? That's it for this time, Bond fans, so long for now.